I'm going to show you how to replace an old radiator without draining the system. Start by isolating the water. Close both valves each side of the radiator. Start to bleed the top to let some air and pressure out. Then you can loosen the bolts either side, lift the radiator off and pour the water out. Mark up where you need to fit your brackets. Drill some clearance holes. Apply the plugs. Now I'm using a special plasterboard plug and bolt. Slide the brackets into position and then screw them firmly to the wall. Double check that they're both level and then you can slowly lift your radiator and place it onto the four brackets so it takes the weight. Then connect your valves up both ends, tighten them slowly using your spanners. Close the bungs at the top and then fill them up with water. For more videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to install this electric towel rail. Start with a screwdriver to remove the four plastic bungs from each corner. Apply some PTF tape on the thread around the blanking plugs and then slowly tighten these up by hand. Mix your inhibitor with clean water and then pour this through a funnel into the radiator. Measure up for your brackets, fix these onto the back of the radiator. It's important to check behind the tiles with the detector to see that there are no pipes or wires there before you start drilling holes. Once you've drilled your holes in the correct position, apply your plug and screw the brackets firmly to the wall. Mount the radiator into position. Using a screwdriver, tighten up the screws on the back of the brackets. Once the radiator's hung, get your electrician to wire the thermostat up to the fuse. If you're looking for more top trade tips, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. I'm going to show you how to install a wall-mounted vanity unit, sink and taps. Start by finding the location where you're going to be putting it on the wall around your pipes. Mark up for the brackets. Check that there's no pipes or wires behind the tiles before you start drilling holes in them. Then plug and screw your brackets into position, checking that they're level. Place your carcass in position and tighten this up. Then you can start to assemble the waste outlet for the plug. Once this is in position and tightened up, you can fit the bottle trap. Then you can fit the taps. Place the tap connectors through the sink. These are the connecting at the bottom with a tap wrench or a socket set. Place the sink into position, then the hot and cold water can be connected. Once this is done, seal the back of it with a line of silicone sealant. Refit your drawers and then you're complete. But if you want to see the full step-by-step -step video, visit the YouTube channel, Bathroom Mountain. Here's how you fit or replace a thermostatic shower in 60 seconds. Start by offering up the mixer bar against the existing plumbing. Put some tape around the nuts so you don't damage them when you tighten them up with your spanner. Mark in the centre where your centre bar is going to be. Place this into position and then it's going to need screwing to the tiles. So level the position of the bracket. Once you've found this, check there's no wires or pipes behind the tiles before you start drilling. Apply your plug and then start to fix the bracket into position, securing it up with a screwdriver. Place the shower bar in and then connect the bottom of your bar, again with some tape and a spanner. Then attach the two heads into position. For more bathroom ideas, like and follow. I'm going to show you how to adjust the temperature of your mixer shower. You can take your Phillips screwdriver and unscrew one of the screws that are in there. It's not very long, usually only about 15, 20 millimeters in length. That little section will come out and it exposes this thermostatic spindle here. So what we need to do now is turn that. And we do that by placing this back on top of it. And we can adjust that now even further down to make it hotter. So now we replace this little sleeve over that position. Slide our cover control back over that. Tighten the screw all the way back up with the Phillips screwdriver, not too tight, and then press your side cap back into position. For the full video, visit Bathroom Mountain's YouTube channel. 
here's how to install a sliding shower enclosure in 60 seconds. Check your instructions and start to fix the frame together. Then fit the rubber strips at both ends. Check that there's no wires behind the walls before you start drilling them. Fix the rails to each side and then start to put the frame in place. Check that it's level and then drill and commit for the next rail. These are attached to the wall. Once they're in place, you can fit the side panels. These can be squeezed together by hand to get them level. Then double check again with the spirit level. The opening side has a side panel that needs to be put into position and then screwed top and bottom. Then you can hang the door. This is on casters and will slide from left to right. Once you're happy that that's moving okay, you can then apply the handle. Seal around the outside with a clear silicone. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm gonna show you how to fit and plumb an entire toilet system. Start by installing all the components in the system. Slide the two bolts into position, fit the rubbers onto the filling and flush valve, place them into position. Then tighten the bolts over the bottom by hand. Sit the system on top of the rubber washer, sliding the two bolts into position. Apply the wing nuts below, and tighten these up by hand. Attach the flexible hose to the filling inlet and tighten up with the spanner. Place the pan connector over the back of the pan. Mark up on the floor tiles where the pan's going to sit. Drill your holes and fix your brackets in position. Then run a line of clear multi-use adhesive around the base. Sit this on a couple of packs to start with. Connect the flexi hose to your 15mm mains and tighten it up with your spanners. Now drive the screws in through the toilet into the brackets to hold it into position. Remove the packs and run a clear line of silicone around the base. Install your toilet seat and then apply a line of white silicone. Like and follow Mr. and Mrs. DIY for more videos. I'm going to show you how to install your own bath. Start by screwing the leg frame to the bottom and the side of the bath and one centre support. Place the plug through the hole on the inside of the bath then screw tight the bottle trap from the underside. Screw in the plug and press it down. Apply the overflow and tighten the bolt at the rear. Hand screw the overflow cover into position and connect the overflow into the bottle trap at the bottom of the bath. Place your taps and connect them up, then connect your flexi hoses. Screw a batten to the wall at the right level, apply a line of general purpose silicone on the batten and on the edge of the bath. Lift this and place into position. Then you connect your hot and water mains, then fit and silicone your two side panels into position, leaving enough space at the side for the tiles. For more how-to videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to show you how to mark up, cut out the holes and install your bath taps. Start by protecting the surfaces. I'm applying some masking tape all the way across the top. Then I'm measuring and marking in this very center. So we need to measure the center between the two pipes. Then transfer these marks onto your masking tape. Start off by drilling a five millimeter hole through your marks. Then you're gonna need a hole cutter suitable for the widths of your pipes. Then start to core out the hole. Once you've done one, place the tap through the hole just to double check that your other mark is in the correct position. And then you can repeat the same process. You can remove the bolts and washers from the pipes off your tap. Start to remove your masking tape, give it a quick sanding down where the sharp edges have been cut. Place your taps through the hole, then start to hand tighten the bolts up the thread by hand. Then you can tighten these up using a monoblock spanner. Now you're ready to place your bath into position and plumb your hot and cold feed. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. I've teamed up with Santander to get behind their latest campaign, The Green Homes Revolution. I want to share some of my DIY tips and knowledge with their customers and staff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your home more energy efficient. So why am I standing in our shower talking to you? Well, these standard shower heads like this use about 2.5 gallons of water per minute. A low flow shower head like this, which is an energy saving one, only uses about 1.5 gallons of water. So there's a saving of one gallon per minute. And this is how quick and easy it is to swap. Unscrew this. Be careful that you don't lose the little rubber washer in here. And then take your new shower head and screw it back together. 
Now one gallon per minute might not sound much, but if you think you have a 10 minute shower every day, that's 10 gallons a day, 365 days a year, equivalent to about 3,560 gallons of water you're saving. Now to mix a shower like this, you've probably got a gas combination boiler that heats the water with an electric pump in it that forces it to this position. So you're saving on water, gas and electric by changing your shower head. So by making quick, simple, inexpensive changes can really make a big difference over time. One more thing to bear in mind when you're having a shower, get yourself an egg timer. Because when you're having a shower, just simply set that for three minutes, quick wash, maybe another three minutes to rinse all the shampoo out, and then you should be out. If you're looking for more energy saving tips around the house, visit the website santander.co.uk. Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and I've recently teamed up with Santander and got behind their latest campaign, buying into the green homes revolution. Now we all know at the moment, energy prices are soaring. And what I wanted to do is share my DIY skills with all Santander's dear customers and staff to make your home more energy efficient, because I believe making small changes over time can make a big difference. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to bleed your radiators, which will make your system run more efficiently and of course, save you money. Now it's a real quick, easy and inexpensive DIY task that you can do. The tools you're gonna to require are either a screwdriver or a radiator key. What I want you to do is turn your central heating system on at home, go around to all the valves, turn these up fully, and then after about half an hour to an hour, feel around all the radiators. You might find it's hot around here where it's coming in. It's nice and warm at the bottom and it's getting a bit cooler. By the time it gets to the top up here, it's cold. Now that's happening on four or five, even all seven or eight of your radiators, you're wasting a lot of energy. Because imagine this, your gas combination boiler, you've got the gas turned up, it's heating the water, the electric pump in there is pumping it around the system. It's working twice as hard to try and pump that water around when air is getting caught here. And you're sitting in your room thinking, ooh, it's a little bit cold, then radiators aren't very hot. So I'm just gonna turn them up a bit higher, turn my boiler up a bit higher, and waste more money and energy. You need to do something about it. And this is what we're gonna do, is bleed the radiators and get all of the air out of that system that's trapped out, and that will allow that warm water to fill all the way up so you get the full use out of each radiator in your home. So at the top of your radiator, either here on the side or sometimes at the back here, you have a bleed valve. Now my one is operated with a flat screwdriver like this. Yours at home may need a radiator key like this one. Either way, all we need to do is unscrew that a little bit and you'll start to hear the air hissing out of there. And that water then will start to rise higher and higher and higher until it eventually dribbles out either at the side of the valve or on my one, I've got a little small hole in here. So do put your old towels down on the floor and have a couple of cloths at hand. Now you can start to hear the air coming out now. This could take anything from 20 up to 60 seconds. So now this water is more or less up to the top. Should be coming out yet yeah, any minute now. There it is. So now we know all that air is out of here and there's just water coming right the way to the top. So I'm gonna close that down, making sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Give that a quick wipe down. And that's got it. Now you need to do this around all the radiators throughout your house. And once you've bled them all, leave them on for about an hour and then feel the tops of them again. Because what you might find is when you're bleeding them from different levels of your house, the ground floor and the upper floor, some of the air could circulate around and find its way back into this first one. So you might need to just go around a couple of them and do it again. But not only is this going to save you money, it's also going to save energy and make your home a more comfortable place to be in. 
So thanks for supporting the Green Homes Revolution. Remember, small changes can make a big difference. If you want to know more energy saving tips, just visit the website, santander.co.uk.